Apologies that this video is a bit late, I've been rather busy with other stuff, but since it's my birthday I thought I'd treat myself by working on this video for you. CS2 has got a few updates recently. The visible one it's received is this. When you're defusing the bomb, your weapon's view model lowers. Stop defusing, and it raises again. Rises, right? But there's a gameplay change with this as well. Because while your gun is lowered, you can't shoot. Meaning that if you see an enemy while you're defusing, rather than instantly being able to stop the defuse and to fire back at them, you now have to wait 150 milliseconds before being able to fire. 0.15 of a second. Valve, please fix. Actually, they see this as a fix. But to what? I would have imagined that the CTs would have had enough on their plate in this situation without any more of a nerf being added to it. Look, they're here, trying to defuse against the clock in a vulnerable position with terrorists still alive. And now they can't even fire back without having to endure a delay first. Oh well, we'll see how it plays. There are a lot of new features and updates to the modding scene, which is great. It's just I haven't touched upon these things because they're quite dry to cover. It's more like they just opened the gateway for cool stuff later on, like this. It's just the patch notes covering these things are often quite obscure and won't mean much to the average person, though I would like to cover all of them at some point and to explain some of the new gameplay possibilities they'd open up for modders. Now for the final bit of these updates, and this is the thing that's taken me time to do. There might be performance changes before and after this update. Counter-Strike 2's performance has long been something that people have complained about, and it seems this update specifically targets the moment you fire your gun, which can come with stuttering and frame rate dips, because a lot is going on in that instant. A lot of people play Counter-Strike 2 in CPU limited conditions, and with these updates looking to optimise CPU usage, it might make a big difference to some people on certain types of setups. So one of these changes is that the moment you fire a gun, it has to load in the particle effects and sound effects associated with it. And this can very temporarily slow stuff down. Now these patch notes claim to have reduced CPU usage in these instances. So here's hoping your 0.1% minimums will improve. And the bullet's trajectory has been reworked to further reduce the burden on your CPU, because there are a lot of calculations involved in figuring out a bullet's penetration through various materials on its way to the target. But the proof is in the pudding, but how to test it. I set up various computers with limited processing power and strapped my trusty LDAT unit to the screens to test how many milliseconds it takes to display the result. It doesn't matter much about the screen that's being tested or anything else since I'm just comparing like for like but before and after the update. So my first setup was a budget gaming desktop, sporting an Intel 12100F processor, which is like the cheapest processor you could sensibly buy for a new gaming build. It only has four cores, but they're reasonably modern and quite powerful. And I didn't spot much of a difference at all before and after this update, even when running in CPU limited conditions. But then with this setup there wasn't much of a problem to fix in the first place. This setup handled the game perfectly well already. You can spot differences here and there, like how gaming on a server runs better in some instances than hosting it on your own PC does, likely because the bullet trajectories are being offloaded onto the server instead of your own PC or whatever, but let's not lose sight of the forest for the trees here. With the 0.1% lows remaining above 100 in all instances, and the average millisecond response time on the LDAT unit ranging just between 15 and 17, it's such a consistent result across all the conditions I tested that it's just not worth analysing further because there clearly isn't a problem with this PC that I'm trying to detect. So I went lower. This is my laptop. It sports an Intel 1260p processor, which is kind of like my desktop one but with a E-core strapped to the side and with a much lower power draw, which in practice makes it significantly slower. Plus the E-cores are a recipe for disaster if the game misuses them. And this laptop has a GeForce MX 550 graphics card, which no, I haven't heard of before either. It ain't great. Which makes it the perfect candidate for this testing. A true worst case scenario. I set it all to low everything, and a low resolution to ensure it's taxing the processor. I made sure I was plugging into the wall to ensure no accidents, and then Fluffykins oversaw the whole thing to make sure it was all done to correct standards. And I found a difference, a huge one. So I redid the entire test and it turns out that was just an anomaly. Thanks for nothing, Fluffykins. But then I didn't reset my LDAT unit between testing, so that threw the average readings off as well. And then I realised it was thermally throttling more and more as the testing continued. And also depending on the time of day that I tested it at, and so on. I can't tell you how many times I had to redo this test. How many times I had to jump between Counter-Strike versions, and to turn the LDAT unit on and off again, and to invite one PC to the other one, and how much of my birthday was wasted. And for what? The guarantee of reliable but insignificant and boring results? Ugh, 
That's why I hate testing minimum frame rates. They're just so finicky that they were wildly outweighed by external factors like where Fluffykins was sitting relative to the exhaust fan on my laptop and so on. Though I will say I'm really impressed by the latency readings on this laptop. It's only a 60Hz screen but it is an OLED which I think really helps keep response times to a minimum, all things considered. I did only test Intel processors, maybe AMD ones would respond differently, probably not. Your mileage may vary. But there you go, an exciting insight into an update that may or may not improve things for you, and an excellent use of my birthday.